Welcome to Last Call with Jamie and Christian. Uh, our guest today, Greg Burge, an author, a basketball coach, a leader in our space, um, the author of Culture Wins and Coaching is Gold. Greg, thanks for joining us today. How are you? I'm awesome, Jamie, and thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah. You know, one of the things I've, uh, we just talked briefly about, uh, and I've really been excited about being able to do over this coaching sabbatical, is have a chance to kind of research those in this space like you are. And, um, you know, you only takes you, you only have to read five books, I guess I, I've heard, um, <laughs> and then, or really commit yourself to study of one of a topic and you've committed yourself to the, to the study of culture. And I think that's so important. So I'm excited to engage in this conversation with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Um, you've done some wonderful things in, in your career and I love this podcast that you're putting together. So really looking forward to, uh, having a, a great discussion on culture, basketball, leadership, and, and wherever it takes us. I love it. I love it. Well, let's jump right in. Uh, you know, culture, why is it, why is it so important and why is it so hard to create? <laughs> you know, a great question. I think it's, it's one of those topics that you hear coaches talking about all the time. I think it gets, it's overused, but it's so important. Um, you know, we got PJ Fleck here in Minnesota and, and PJ Fleck is a culture guy and I love PJ Fleck. Um, and he talks about culture, 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 but you know, as I really have thought about culture and my teams, and in addition to being a, you know, a varsity basketball coach for, for many years, I've coached a whole host of sports. Um, I'm a high school principal currently. So you talk about leading a school and, and the culture and the leadership needed for that. I, I've seen it from a lot of different lenses. And, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big rah-rah guy. I'm not a, you know, a get in a circle, kumbaya type of, type of guy, but I'm a culture guy because, you know, culture, and I've defined it three ways. Culture is what we allow, whatever organization team we're on, it's what we allow. Culture is what we emphasize. And most importantly, culture is every day. And, you know, I'm, we're going through our season right now in basketball and I'm, you know, I'm reflecting on this as the season is going and, you know, every interaction we have with kids, every interaction we have with our team, our program, really what we're doing is we are creating our, our culture. Um, with every decision, with every point of emphasis, with everything we allow or not allow. And it's constant. And I think um, it's really important for us to understand that culture is every day. I think sometimes people feel like we get a culture and then we're set. And then what happens is we forget about it, things happen, and then we're trying to auto-correct that after the fact. So that's how I define it. And that's kind of how I've um, you know, functioned with our teams and program. Yeah, it's so interesting because, you know, you're on the speaking circuit. I'm on the speaking circuit. You know, you sort of go in, you meet with someone at the beginning of the year and then you know they call you mid-year and it's like they haven't done the daily processes that it takes to yeah. uphold that culture. Um, and it's a thousand or a million little decisions that are made or not made that will determine how that culture is going to sort of play out. You know, as a principal, how are you create? How, how do you create that sort of culture? You know, when everyone's coming in for seven hours a day, um, but they're coming from different cultures, how are you? How do you create that kind of culture in an educational way as a principal? You know, I, I think cult, it's the same rules, really, that I, I just mentioned. It's, you know, what are we going to allow in our, our, in our school? How are we going to treat each other? How are we going to interact? You know, it's something that, as simple as you're walking down the hall and are you going to say hello to kids or not? And, you know, every time that you do that, you're creating a, a welcoming environment, a welcoming culture. Uh, if you see kids talking with their buddies and they they throw they swear or throw some profanity, are you going to address that? Or are you going to let it go? Because if you if you don't address that, you're in essence allowing it. So it's it's all of those. I'm going to say interactions of how you interact with the people in your organization, teachers as well. Um, and you're creating that each and every day. And um, you really got to decide what is important to you. Um, what are, what are you going to allow? What are you going to talk about a lot? What are you going to emphasize? And then just keep, I'm going to say, moving your whole group of people in that direction each and every day. You're going to, you're going to have issues you have to deal with. I mean, none of us are perfect. It's weird because, you know, I feel like the same issues kind of pop up at different places. Um, and so like you said, the engaging in the conversation allows you a different perspective to be able to kind of go and attack the problem. Um, you know, I have this thing, I call it borrowed experience and, and you, you get, you know, you, you get experience two ways. You can get yeah. experience through personal experience 
which is usually after making a mistake yep. um, or borrowed experience is really when you have people around you that can share stories, ideas. And so when you're able to kind of build this community out, when you in this, there's a thought leader community that I think we're all sort of a part of, you know, it gives you a chance to borrow the experience of others to allow you to be able to go and implement it in other ways. Yeah, that's a great phrase. I love that. Um, borrowed experience. Yeah, I think, you know, and it's, it's interesting with um, my route into coaching, and I, I share this because I was a coach for uh, seven years young, age 27 to 34, and we had some, we had success, we had good teams, but then I became a principal and I had to get out of coaching, and I was out of coaching for like nine years, and during that time, I had young kids, and so my kids grew up, and then I, I got into coaching youth, like my third grade basketball, second grade basketball, fourth grade basketball, and then the coaching job opened back up, and um, I was already principal and I had a superintendent willing. And so I got back into it after being away from it, still pretty young, uh, but also being, you know, having the borrowed experience, like you mentioned, as a school principal and seeing things from other lenses and as a parent. And, you know, I've got a lot of, you know, I've had kids come through. I've had a kid who, you know, my daughter's going to be a college athlete. Uh, my son was like a ninth man on our team, so he didn't get a ton of playing time. So I, I know I know the parent perspective of having a kid who maybe doesn't play a lot, even when I'm the coach. Right. And, and so I've seen both ends and the value of that. Um, you know, and my, my son was part of a state tournament, third place state tournament team. He had a huge impact on our team, but he wasn't on the floor all the time, but he still was a great teammate and was a, a huge part of our team. So, you know, I've written about some of that too, but I think I've, I've seen these, and I love your phrasing, borrowed experiences, because all the, everything we can learn from our own experience, from reading others, from talking, you know, that kind of makes us who we are. And um, sharing that with other people is something that I'm, I'm just happy that I'm able to do a little bit. You know, I love the process of building self and team awareness. Yeah, that's a great phrase. You know, um, that, I, I love that. that. Um, I feel like so many times we sort of tell them what we want them to repeat back to us. Um, now, I just, when I say we, I mean coaching in general. Yep. I'm like the I'm like the opposite. I sort of want them to communicate to me what they're thinking, how they're feeling, in an honest way, um, because I think there's nothing more important than building that self and team awareness. I, I love that phrase. And that's, that, I mean, to me, that's what I'm really trying to do when I do that is I don't want to be, sometimes we've got to be top down, right? I mean, sometimes you're the coach, you're the decision maker. It is what it is. But, you know, even in the way that we play, I just had this conversation with our team the other day. We've had, we've had two, um, we're, we're eight no to start the year. We're off to a great start. We've had two games that have come down to the last 10 seconds um, intense situations that our players made great plays and, and won the game. Um, and, and I told the kids, I'm trying to build in you, um, for you. I'm not going to bail you out of situations. I'm not a guy that likes to call a lot of timeouts. I want them to learn through situations, learn through experience. And I want, you know, one thing I've learned over the years of coaching is it's, it's players, not plays, right? I'm going to put my players in a position to make a play. I'm not going to run a set play necessarily that, you know, maybe puts it on me as a coach. I'm going to focus on getting the right kid, the ball and let them make the play. Yeah. It was funny. So, you know, the last few years at George Washington, we took a lot of transfers in. Yeah. And I learned a ton for that process. Um, again, not good or bad, just learned a ton. And the onboarding of a transfer is different because there's a lot of coaches who aren't building self-awareness. They're sort of building robots. Um, yeah. And so, so when you bring a player in to your, to your culture that is used to just re regurgitating whatever he's told to say, it, it's very different. It takes a long time to get them to a place where they can be honest with themselves and self-aware and be genuine. Um, and so like we had to make that a huge part. We call it our onboarding process that I've kind of redesigned going through that experience because we just, it was hard to get them just to be honest um, with with themselves and with others. Not because they're trying not to be, but because the culture they're coming to before, where again, we're just about regurgitating information. 
And I was yeah. just shocked. You know, now I've had a chance to go and watch a ton of practices, a lot of different people. And I'm like shocked. I'm like, wow, we were really doing something really different. And so I can only imagine the culture shock of coming into something like that where your thoughts, your words really matter. Yeah, I, I agree completely. And one thing, you know, one thing I'm kind of I'm, I'm proud of with our, our guys is we've had a number of kids. We got four kids playing college basketball right now. And we're, I mean, we're we graduate 100 kids a grade, Jamie, and we're a small school. Um, and we've got a we, we got another one that's going to be going next year to play college basketball and another couple that are coming up that probably will. But in our last, I'm going to say seven years, um, three of those kids are four year starters. They, they go into that college program and they're a four year starter. They end up being captains and leaders. And I think it's because they just know how to play and they, they are very self-aware and they're very role driven and they understand you know, they're how they can fit into a team. And I think some of that is, is obviously due to the culture and how we play and how we, we talk and interact that they can go in and just be, you know, fit right in and find their niche, find the role and be okay with it. Um, and again, that's the culture piece of what you're trying to create in your, in your team, um, that carries over in the long run. Um, but that's something I'm proud about because, I don't think that's real normal where you have kids go and they can contribute for so long right away, no matter what level they're playing at. Um, but I'm proud of the kids that we produce in our school and our program to be able to do that. Yeah, that's huge. And, you know, you're the age you're working with is so impressionable. Yeah. That, I mean, I think back to my my JV and, and my JV coaches, the stuff they were teaching us um, our early like early high school. I mean, really all through high school. But that those four years, five years now are really important because it's like you said, that transition process you talked about where now it is about winning and knowing how to compete and learning how to fit into a team. Yep. When you don't have someone to explain that to you the right way, you can be lost going into yep. a situation that's competitive. But when someone explains it to you the right way from the beginning, it just becomes a, you just understand it so much better. Um, and so I can imagine like doing that work early on. And I would tell you this, in our recruiting, we really look for coaches that led that way. Yeah. Um, now, there's a talent level. So, you know, sometimes you take a take a chance on a talented guy. Yeah. But if you found a coach like yourself, their players always acclimated really quickly. Um, yeah. And they always had a leadership ability. You know, we call those guys HPIs, high-performing individuals, high-potential individuals. Yeah. They always had a leadership ability to bring other people along with them more easily. Mm -hmm. uh, we do this thing on last call here. Um, it's the end of the night. Um, the bartenders ring the bell. It's last call. Um, the place is emptying out. You've got two people beside you. The person on the left is someone who's retired. The person on the right is someone who's still actively involved in coaching, business, whatever. What two people do you want beside you? Oh, wow. I didn't do my research to be prepared to answer that question enough, I guess. I watched a few of your podcasts. I didn't get to the end. Um, you know, retired coach, um, you know, you, you could go with someone like, uh, you know, who's, I guess an, an idol that I always looked up to is not here anymore. Like a John Wooden, I'm going to go with a local guy, a guy by the name of, of Leo Fausch, who was, um, when I was a, I mean, he was a 40 year JV coach in Lake city, Minnesota, 40 years as a JV coach. Um, when I took over as the head coach, he stayed as a JV coach. So, so he was, you know, I'm 27 years old, the varsity coach. He's, he's my JV coach who had been at it already for 30 some years. Um, and just the insight and the experience and the wisdom. I mean, you got to know the guy, he's just a, he's an icon. Um, and even today he comes to games and, you know, I talk to him, I'll have him come to our team. Um, guys like that, you know, I, I love having by my side. Um, and then, you know, a, a, a coach, a, a current coach today. Well, that's a great question too. Um, you know, I, I got so many people that I've, I follow and re respect. I, I love, you know, having PJ Fleck here as a football guy in, in Minnesota and just the, the culture piece. I mean, it's kind of funny cause he, he rubs some people the wrong way cause he comes across a little hokey and rah, rah, but, um, 
it's who he is. And that's what I love about him is it's not fake. It is totally who he is. And, you know, I'd love to sit down with him and, and really chat culture and dive deeper into some of the stuff that he does. Cause I, I feel like I'm only scratching the surface with what, what he has um, on that story. I got a great story related to it. Um, the year that I started coaching, okay. As a, as a varsity coach at age 27 it was also the same year I got married, got married in August. Um, the guy that I replaced as a, as the varsity coach in Lake city is in the hall of fame, the Minnesota hall of fame. He won five, 600 wins. He's a legend. His name's Jerry Snyder. Um, we're getting married on a hot August night in a, with no air conditioning in our wedding area. And, uh, I had replaced him as a teacher. Okay. So I, repl I was a teacher for three years before I got a head coach. Um, I replaced him as a teacher. Uh, so he's, you know, probably 60 years old at the time. You know who walked me out of our wedding? The last person to leave our wedding was my wife, me, Jerry Snyder, and his wife. They walked us out of our wedding. Um, and so you talk about last call. Uh, that's the first thing I thought of is a guy like that um, who's just a, a class act and um, still a, a friend today. I love it. You know, it's and hoops brings us all these little interactions with people, um, yeah. you know, that the world can't, can't see, you know, like sometimes you say, why was this guy a legendary head coach? And well, it's because he will be the last guy to walk out with his wife in a wedding. You know? <laughs> yeah. and, and you would think that, Oh, it's because, you know, his flex was this good or it's underneath out of bounds plays, but it's really some, something much deeper um, that you have that story and others probably have that story of them being the last one to help clean up the gym. Or I'm sure there's other stories there of that person just being so connected to what was needed in the moment for people. Um, tremendous story. Where can we find you? Um, you know, we've been talking about Twitter. I'm active on Twitter. I think uh, my handle is at GB1121. So at GB1121. That's pretty much you know, the, the starting point, I have a link in my bio that can bring you to, um, you know, a one page site that has links to, you know, the books I've written or my newsletter, um, or my, you know, website. So, um, yeah, it's, I'd say that's the starting point. And, uh, I'd love for people to jump on Twitter and interact with me and, um, people like you, I mean, I, I've already written down a couple ideas from our conversation, Jamie, and that I'm going to, you know, dive into deeper as well. So I, I really appreciate this. And, uh, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. Go check my man out there on Twitter. He's got tremendous amount of resources there. I'm enjoying learning more about him and his processes. And if you want to learn, you want to continue to build culture, um, I would jump on there and learn a little bit there. Thanks for joining us again on Last Call. We will see you soon. Okay. Thank you for joining us on The Last Call, powered by Speakeasy, where careers grow through relationships and relationships grow through Speakeasy. We hope you enjoyed it. And we look forward to connecting with you soon.